27 Signs of the Imminent Rapture of the Church, the Body of Christ. Greetings, I'm Dr. Paul Felter. Welcome to my video podcast where I expose church fallacies and flawed Christian traditions with Bible truth. I let the Bible speak for itself. Before we look at the 27 signs, there are a few things we need to understand. Number one, there are no prerequisite events associated with the rapture. Nothing has to happen before the rapture can take place. Number two, the 27 signs pertain to the coming seven-year tribulation. Number three, therefore, if the tribulation is near, then the rapture is even nearer, as number four, the rapture precedes the tribulation. All right, let's get right into the 27 signs. Number one is the nation of Israel. Obviously, without a nation of Israel in the land and them in control of Jerusalem, we're nowhere near the last day. So the nation of Israel is the first sign. Ezekiel 36, 24. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Ezekiel 37, 21. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. So, before any end-time prophecies can play out, Israel must be back in the land. Number two, wars and rumors of wars. There are many different types of wars going on in the world today. Number one is the terrorist insurgencies. We see those in uh, Afghanistan. Central African Republic, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Libya, Mali, South Sudan, Iraq, India, Pakistan, the Philippines, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Georgia, and Moldova. Number two, drug wars, Colombia and Mexico. Number three, civil wars. We've seen that in Myanmar, Somalia, and in Syria. Number four, international wars in the Ukraine and in Israel. Number five, rumors of wars for South Korea and Taiwan. Overall, 34 countries are currently experiencing war on some level. Matthew 24, verse 6, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Number three, earthquakes from 12-1-2023 to 12-31-2023. For the month of December, there were 957 magnitude 4.5 or greater earthquakes worldwide. According to long-term records held by the United States Geological Survey since about 1900, in the past 40 to 50 years, our records show that we have exceeded the long-term average number of major earthquakes about a dozen times. Earthquakes are getting more and more numerous and more severe. Matthew 24, verse 7, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Number 4, Volcanoes. As of December 15, 2023, 47 volcanoes were in continuous eruption status according to the Smithsonian Institute National Museum of Natural History. Some familiar volcanoes are Etna in Italy, Stromboli, also in Italy, Fuego in Guatemala, Krakatau in Indonesia, the Great Sitkan in Alaska, Kilauea in Hawaii, and the recent volcanic eruption in Iceland. Revelation 8, verse 8, the second trumpet judgment. And the second angel sounded, as it were a great mountain burning with fire, was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea became blood. Number 5. Droughts, Floods, and Severe Weather A new 2023 NASA-led study confirms that major droughts and floods have indeed been occurring more often. Droughts and wildfires alone accounted for over $20.4 billion in total crop losses, with the remaining $1.08 billion linked to hurricanes, hail, flooding, and other severe weather events. 14% of worldwide cropland suffers from drought. Revelation 11.6, speaking of the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, during the tribulation. These have power to shut heaven, 
that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Number six, the sun getting stronger. The sun is now more active than NASA predicted. It could be in its strongest cycle since records began, according to a headline in Forbes. The sun's activity has quickly ramped up, and even though we haven't reached peak levels in this cycle, the sun's activity is already exceeding predictions, said Nicola Fox, director of NASA's heliophysics division. We are currently in solar cycle 25, with 2025 being the peak year. This is something that the global warming climate change fanatics will not tell you. The sun is the cause of all weather on planet Earth. Last year we had the hottest summer on record, and it's not because of carbon dioxide or you using a gas stove or a gas lawnmower or you breathing. It's because of the sun. Since we are nearing the peak of this solar cycle, 2024 could also be a record-setting year for heat. Don't let the climate change fanatics fool you into thinking it's your fault. It's not. It's the fault of the sun. And it's only going to get worse, as recorded in Revelation 16, verses 8 and 9. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Number 7. Pestilence and Plagues The World Health Organization warns of war, famine, pestilence, and death. Leaders of the World Health Organization, the WHO, have issued their most dire warning about the confluence of crises facing humanity, including pandemics, the impact of war in the Ukraine on global food supplies, and the danger of widespread malnutrition and starvation. Jesus spoke of this in Matthew 24, verse 7. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Number 8. Wildfires the number of wildfires to rise by 50% by 2100 and governments are not prepared, experts warn. Headline from the UN Environmental Program. New data on forest fires confirms what we've long feared. Forest fires are becoming more widespread, burning nearly twice as much tree cover today as they did 20 years ago. Another headline from the World Resources Institute. 2 Peter 3, verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Deuteronomy 4, verse 24. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Revelation 8, 5. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices, and thunderings, and lightnings, and an earthquake. Number 9. Peace and Security The image you see on the screen is called the Guardian for International Peace and Security, and it stands at the United Nations Visitors Plaza in New York City. The Apostle John writes about this image in Revelation 13, verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. That passage refers to the Antichrist and his beast kingdom. Daniel in chapter 8 verse 25 writes, And through his, that would be the Antichrist, policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. Peace will be a weapon in the hand of the Antichrist. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Number 10. Economic Decline 
As of December 2022, 110 of the 177 reported countries were in economic decline, the worst being Venezuela and the best Israel. Countries in economic decline are more amenable to global economic reforms and the coming global governance, the New World Order. Revelation 13, 16 and 17. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Number 11. Riots and Protests the last five years worldwide. Over 400 anti-government riots. 23% have lasted more than three months. Here is a list of some of the largest riots worldwide over the past five years, each containing over 100,000 protesters. Algeria, Armenia, Bangladesh, Belarus, Bolivia, Brazil, Bulgaria, Chile, Colombia, the Czech Republic, France, Gaza Strip, Germany, Hong Kong, Hungary, India, Iran, Israel, Italy, Lebanon, Mexico, Poland, Russia, Spain, the Sudan, Turkey, the UK, the US, and Venezuela. Psalm 2, verses 1 through 4. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. If you are paying attention to the news, then you know that chaos worldwide is on the rise, and it will only get worse as we near the seven-year tribulation. Number 12, the One World Government, the New World Order. Klaus Schwab in the World Economic Forum, Pope Francis, the World Health Organization, and the United Nations call for a one world government attacking border walls and national sovereignty. Daniel chapter 7, verse 23. The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. The World Economic Forum, created by Klaus Schwab in 1971, is the international organization for public and private cooperation. However, you and I cannot join. Only the elite, rich, and powerful are invited. The WEF calls for the Great Reset, aiming to reset our human systems and restructure our global economy and the way we live to address social, environmental, health, and economic challenges. The WEF tells us that at the end of the Great Reset, you will own nothing and you will be happy. That is nothing but repackaged, rebranded communism where the oligarchs and tyrants own and control everything. However, their attempts at a one-world government will fail, just as all previous attempts have failed. The only one that will ever set up a lasting one-world government is the Lord Jesus Christ after his second coming. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The government of the world has yet to be upon the shoulders of the Lord Jesus Christ. But that day is coming when the Lord returns and sets up his millennial kingdom that will last not just for a thousand years, but forever and ever. Luke chapter 1, verses 31 to 33. This is the angel Gabriel talking to Mary. 
And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob for ever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Number 13. The One World Religion Religious leaders unite for peace at an open dialogue event in Kazakhstan in 2022. Quote, We have a common goal, but we are no longer looking at our differences, but we are recognizing our common concern for those who struggle or suffer. Peace. Seems that the world is desperate for peace. The Apostle John writing in Revelation 13 verse 15 about the false prophet. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. The Apostle John talks about this one world religion in Revelation chapter 17 verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Do we have a religion in the Middle East that would fit this description? Yes, we do. On this map of the Eastern Hemisphere, you see Europe, Africa, the Middle East, Western Asia, and the Far East. Notice the areas colored in green. These are Islamic countries. The light green is Sunni, and the dark green is Shia Islam. Clearly, all of North Africa is Muslim. The entire Middle East is Muslim, with the exception of Israel. Much of Western Asia is Muslim, including parts of India. And Indonesia is entirely Muslim. Yet, the Muslims want land for peace with the nation of Israel? Please, give me a break. Currently, the number one religion in the world is Christianity at 32%, Islam at 23%, then Hinduism, Buddhism, and no religious affiliation make up the rest. But what happens the morning after the rapture? Christianity is no longer the main religion. What is? Islam. Islam will be the main religion after the rapture going into the seven-year tribulation. Revelation 17, verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. The woman is the false religion during the tribulation. Now, does Islam have a great city that reigns over the kings of the earth? It certainly reigns over the kings of the earth on this map, and yes, it does. It's Mecca. Here is a picture of the Grand Mosque in Mecca. Every Muslim is required at least once in their life to make a pilgrimage to Mecca. Now, during the pilgrimage, which is called the Hajj, Mecca looks like this. Literally, millions of people gather in Mecca for the Hajj to worship Allah and their prophet Muhammad. But where does such a crowd stay? Obviously, the hotels can't hold this many people. Not far from the Grand Mosque is an area called Mina, and Mina has large tent cities, as you see in this photograph. These ten cities are enormous, as you see in this photograph. Now, I'm showing you all this so you can understand the enormity of this event and what it means to a Muslim. It was the highlight of their life to go to Mecca and to worship at the Grand Mosque. And this will be the number one religion in the world during the seven-year tribulation. This next slide, you see several flags of various countries in the Middle East. The Palestinian or Gaza flag, the flag of Jordan, Iraq, Egypt, the Sudan, Kuwait, Syria, the United Arab Emirates, Libya, Lebanon, Iran, and Yemen. Notice they all have something in common. They have the same color scheme, white, red, black, and green. Now, if you're a student of prophecy, these four colors actually mean something because they refer to the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The white horse and rider being the Antichrist, 
the red horse of war, the black horse of famine, and the pale green horse of death and hell. Interesting that the Muslim countries pick these four colors for their national flags. Just another Bible hint from the Holy Spirit as who will be the main players in the seven-year tribulation. If you're interested in this topic, I have recently updated my book, The Last Generation, Islam and Bible Prophecy, that goes into the subject of Islam's role during the seven-year tribulation in great detail. As soon as it's available on Amazon, I will post a link on my website, breadoflife.media. Number 14, good is evil and evil is good. Traditional marriage, bad. Gay marriage, good. Male and female, bad. Gender diversity, good. Truth, bad. Lying, good. Truth is the new hate speech. Here we have a picture of the Drag Queen Story Hour being held in many of our public schools. This would actually be hilarious if it wasn't so pathetically evil. These people cannot reproduce, so they recruit in our schools, corrupting our children and grandchildren. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, will inherit the kingdom of God. I use the New King James Bible here because the word homosexual did not exist in 1611 when they published the original King James Bible. The word homosexual was coined in the mid-19th century in Germany, that's why it's in many of your modern Bibles, with the exception of the NIV, which is a homosexual-friendly Bible. Jesus had a particular harsh word for these people in Luke chapter 17, verse 2. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, that he should offend one of these little ones. If you have children or grandchildren in the public school system, then you need to check on what they're being taught. Ensure that they are not being corrupted by folks like these. There's a special place in the lake of fire reserved for those that corrupt little children. Number 15, Israel at war. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israel at war after Hamas launches surprise attack. Hamas launched a surprise attack against Israel on Saturday morning, October 7th, which began with Hamas terrorists killing Jewish women, children, babies, and soldiers. Israel's response was slow, with jets attacking targets across Gaza, followed by a ground assault. Matthew 24, verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. I added this slide because this current war could lead to the peace treaty or covenant signed by the Antichrist and many nations. If that could be the case, then the seven-year tribulation would then begin, meaning the rapture would be even sooner. Number 16, Digital Currency, Mark of the Beast Technology. The World Economic Forum has declared that all citizens must be implanted with a CBDC microchip in the very near future to fully participate in society and do basic things such as purchase food and water. CBDC stands for Central Bank Digital Currency. According to Professor Richard Warner, in the very near future, citizens will need to use the latest technology, such as the CBDC chip implant, to access their bank accounts. Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 and 17. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. I've always had an issue with the mark of the beast being a microchip. Number one, there is no religious or spiritual 
association or connotation with a microchip. Number two, why would it be in the forehead? The forehead is a terrible place to try to put a chip implant because the skin is so thin. Your right hand would be okay, but certainly not your forehead. The word mark is the Greek word karagma. It means a stamp, imprint, brand, or badge of servitude. I like the badge of servitude idea because that easily could carry a religious association. Remember, those that take the mark of the beast align themselves with the Antichrist, thus condemning themselves to the lake of fire. So are there people today that wear something on their forehead that has a religious connotation? Yes, there are. These are Hamas fighters wearing the green headband of Hamas. There's writing on that green headband and also on the green flags in the background. And that writing says there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. When you see this green headband, you immediately know you are looking at Muslims that follow their prophet Muhammad and worship the moon god Allah. Notice the new uniforms and equipment, including those new AK-47s. Guess who paid for that? Well, we did, the American taxpayer. We have funded a United Nations group called UNRWA, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestinian refugees in the Near East. The Palestinians are the only refugee people on earth that have their own personal United Nations agency. In recent weeks, it was discovered that some members of UNRWA actually participated in the Hamas invasion of Israel and that others actually held Jewish hostages. The Biden administration, along with several other countries, has recently cut off all funding to UNRWA. But Hamas is not the only group that wears a headband identifying them to a particular religion. Hezbollah fighters wear a yellow headband that reads, The Party of Allah. Iranian fighters wear a red headband that says, The Innocent, The Martyrs. This is a martyr's headband of all those that have died for the cause of Allah. Here's an interesting photograph of children wearing the red headband of uh, Iran, the martyr's headband. Now, this picture was not taken in a school in Tehran. It was taken in an Iranian school right here in good old Houston, Texas. With the influx of so-called migrants at our southern border, who knows how many terrorists are actually in the United States? Number 17, the Third Temple. Well, the first temple was Solomon's temple, completed around 970 B.C. The second temple was Zerubbabel's temple, completed in 516 B.C. This temple was also called Herod's temple at the time of Christ because Herod did a makeover to garner favor with the Jews. The third temple will be the tribulation temple, built early in the seven-year tribulation. And the fourth temple will be the millennial temple, built during the millennial kingdom, as described in Ezekiel chapters 40 through 48. Throughout the past 1900 years of exile, the Jewish people longed to return to Israel, build the third temple in Jerusalem, and restore the temple service and worship. The Temple Institute has 500 trained priests, a high priest, the Sanhedrin, and all the temple implements of worship and priestly garments completed. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, speaking of the Antichrist, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. The Antichrist will agree to the rebuilding of the third temple because he wants to sit in it for just this reason, to proclaim himself God. Number 18, the red heifer. Numbers 19, verse 2. This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord hath commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. An unblemished, pure red heifer is the key ingredient to temple worship. Israel has four qualified red heifers. They are now old enough for sacrifice. 
the red heifer is required for ceremonial purification. A red heifer is to be sacrificed as a burnt offering, and the ashes of that offering mixed with water from the pool of Siloam for a purification water. This purification water is necessary to purify the newly rebuilt temple so it can be ceremonially clean for worship. Israel originally received five red heifers from a farmer here in Texas at the cost of $100,000 each, but subsequently one of them has grown some either black hairs or white hairs and rendered itself impure. Notice that the red heifers do not have an ear tag. During COVID, for some reason, farmers stopped marking their cattle with ear tags for a short time, and this worked out to Israel's favor because had it been marked with an ear tag, it would have been unclean. The Lord truly works in mysterious ways, doesn't he? So Israel has everything they need to rebuild and sanctify the tribulation temple. Number 19, apostasy. Days of Noah, days of Lot. 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The folks you see there on the left are two men from the United Methodist Church in Charleston, South Carolina, displaying their, looks like prayer shawls, with the uh, pride colors on them. The folks on the right are from the All Saints Church in Pasadena, California. Looks like a happy bunch, but I really do feel sorry for them because they have no idea the judgment that awaits them. The acceptance of homosexuality in the church is a clear sign of the end times apostasy during this present dispensation of grace. Luke chapter 17, verses 28 to 30. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. That would be the second coming. We see these end time events right before our eyes on a regular daily basis. Number 20 the pre-trib rapture teaching waning. More and more pastors and teachers are departing from the pre-tribulation rapture teaching. I guess they're afraid they might offend somebody. Many pastors don't even teach about the rapture at all. They probably don't even believe it. Many say that the pre-tribulation rapture is an invention of John Darby in the 1800s. But John Darby did not invent the pre-tribulation rapture. He merely revived it from being suppressed for 1,500 years by the Church of Rome. Others say that he got it from a vision from Margaret MacDonald, a young child in Scotland. But if you've ever read her account, she mentions nothing whatsoever about a pre-trib rapture. In fact, if you read her account, it seems like she's talking about a post-trib rapture, if anything. But the pre-trib rapture is true, and it is what the Bible teaches. Sadly, many today are Bible users and not Bible believers. They merely use the Bible to find verses here and there to support their presuppositions and their false teachings. Be a Bible believer, not merely a Bible user. Romans 16, verse 17, the Apostle Paul writes, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. What doctrine is Paul talking about? His doctrine, his doctrine that he teaches and his doctrine that we have learned. Mark them which depart from Paul's doctrine and avoid them. Number 21, end times preaching decline. Satan does not want the world nor the church to know what is coming. He wants all to be dumbed down and compliant. 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. 
Many pastors and teachers do not want to offend sinners with the truth. They preach a combination of Christianized psychology, prosperity gospel, and a little motivation here and there. Plus, they sprinkle in the name of Jesus occasionally, and everybody thinks they're hearing Bible truth, and they're hearing nothing but rubbish, the wisdom of men, and the philosophies of mankind, coupled with church traditions. What did Jesus say about traditions? He's told the Pharisees that because of their traditions, they make void, they nullify the word of God. Mark 7, verse 13. Number 22, lies, deception, and false teachers. 2 Timothy 3, verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. 2 Peter 2, verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. If you've watched Christian television over the past uh, several decades, then you've had your fill of false teachers who are nothing but charlatans interested in only your money, not your spiritual well-being. Matthew 7, verse 15, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Matthew 24, 11, And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Indeed, many, many Christians are deceived by these people, and they send them hundreds of millions of dollars every year. 2 Corinthians 11 Verses 13 to 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Stay in the word for that is the only way you will be able to discern good from evil. Number 23, anti-Semitism. The first half of 2023 sees a 10% rise in anti-Semitic incidents across the U.S. The United States also accounts for roughly 50% of worldwide occurrences of anti-Semitism, compared to 37% last year. Anti-Semitic incidents in the U.S. rose by 388% in the second half of 2023, according to data prepared for the World Zionist Organization. John chapter 16, verse 2, Jesus speaking to the Jews, They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. We saw that on October 7th. Muslims killing Jews, thinking they're doing their God, Allah, a service. Matthew 24, verses 9 and 10. Jesus speaking to his disciples about the coming tribulation. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Jews betraying Jews. We saw this in Nazi Germany, Jews betraying other Jews to garner favor with the Reich. Here's another group of anti-Semites, the International Court of Justice in The Hague. Israel is on trial for genocide in Gaza. But is Hamas on trial for genocide against Israel? No. This kangaroo court only exists to punish Israel. Zechariah 14, verse 2. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Number 24. The United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Goals Summit, September 18th and 19th, 2023. The 2023 Sustainable Development Goals Summit took place on the 18th and 19th of September in New York. 
it marked the beginning of a new phase of accelerated progress toward the Sustainable Development Goals, with high-level political guidance on transformative and accelerated actions leading up to 2030. Even though these talks began on September 18th and 19th of last year, they are ongoing. They are working feverishly to attain these Sustainable Development Goals by 2030, which incidentally is seven years from now. These talks were interrupted by the war in Gaza. Now they are trying to include a two-state solution in with their Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. It's interesting that the United Nations is working on a seven-year program that will reach its fulfillment in 2030. We find a similar seven-year covenant in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. The one week is not a week of days, but a week of years. So this covenant in Daniel 9.27 is a seven-year covenant. This passage is the proof text for the tribulation being seven years. The Antichrist will confirm this covenant with Israel and the surrounding nations, thus beginning the seven-year tribulation. Number 25, UFOs. Here are some recent headlines. U.S. recovered non-human biologics from UFO crash sites. Officials and lawmakers push for more government transparency on UFOs. Whistleblower tells Congress the U.S. is concealing multi-decade program that captures UFOs. Aliens could be blamed for the rapture, the removal of all the radical fundamentalists, yeah, like you and me, preventing the spiritual evolution of the world to a new age of enlightenment. Acts 2, verse 19. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood, fire, and vapors of smoke. Isaiah 60, verse 8. Who are these that fly as a cloud, and as the doves to their windows? You can study more about this topic in Genesis chapter 6, Ezekiel chapter 1, and Revelation chapter 9. Number 26. Euphrates River drying up. Why is the Euphrates River drying up and what does it mean? Revelation 16, verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. This passage speaks to the gathering of armies in Israel for the great battle of Armageddon, just prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Interesting that we are already seeing the Euphrates River drying up in preparation for this great war. Number 27, Rise in Satanism. A couple of headlines here. Satan is getting hot as hell in American pop culture, according to Newsweek. The devil is front and center in movies, TV shows, podcasts, and even children's books. There are even Satan after school clubs that meet in public schools. On the top right, we see a satanic after-school club. At the bottom right, we see Sam Smith doing a satanic presentation at the Grammys. The bottom left, we have a picture of the Great Owl at the Bohemian Grove, where the rich and famous and our presidents go to worship the devil once a year. And the top left, a woman dressed in her satanic garb. The Harry Potter book sparked a striking rise in Satanism and witchcraft among children. Disney, beginning with Fantasia in 1940, produced many children's films, shows, and attractions involving witchcraft, demonic characters, black magic, sorcery, and enchantments. Revelation 13, verse 4. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Well, a few chapters later, we find out exactly who was able to make war with him, and that would be the Lord Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And lastly, I have a bonus slide, the two-state solution. 
The two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict envisions an independent state of Palestine alongside the state of Israel in the region west of the Jordan River. If this were to happen, it would leave the state of Israel undefensible, as the width of Israel by Tel Aviv would only be about 10 or 11 miles. Joel chapter 3 verse 2, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. The parting of the land of Israel is the last straw. God will then set in motion the end time events culminating in the redemption of Israel. What we have today is a confluence of events, a confluence of end time signs. Any one or two of these would not be significant, but taking them all together is extremely significant. As Jesus said, when you see all these things come to pass, look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. There seems to be much confusion between the rapture and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Many Christians read passages, but they are unable to determine, does the passage refer to the rapture, or does the passage refer to the second coming? Well, I've put together this chart to differentiate the characteristics between the rapture and the second coming. So let's get started. The rapture happens before the seven-year tribulation, whereas the second coming happens at the end of the seven-year tribulation. So there are at least seven years between these two events. At the rapture, Jesus comes in the air. He does not touch the surface of the earth. At the second coming, Jesus comes to the earth. He comes at the Mount of Olives, where he departed from. At the rapture, Jesus comes for his saints. That's us, the church, the body of Christ. At the second coming, Jesus comes with his mighty angels to judge and make war. The rapture involves the church, the body of Christ only. The second coming, all humanity is impacted. The rapture is an instantaneous event. At the second coming, all the world will see him. At the rapture, believers are taken to heaven. At the second coming, believers enter the millennial kingdom. At the rapture, there is no judgment or wrath. At the second coming, Jesus comes to judge and make war. The rapture is imminent. There are no prerequisite signs. The second coming, Jesus returns to the earth at a specific time, at the end of the seven-year tribulation, and there are many signs and wonders that precede that event. There are no signs that precede the rapture. There are many signs and wonders that precede the second coming. The rapture is a time of great joy and comfort for believers. The second coming is a time of mourning, as Israel will mourn as one mourns for their firstborn son. They will realize that their ancestors killed their Messiah 2,000 years ago, and they have suffered for that ever since. At the rapture, there is no mention of Satan. At the second coming, Satan is bound a thousand years. After the rapture, the tribulation begins. After the second coming, the millennial kingdom begins. Only the Apostle Paul writes about the rapture. The Old Testament prophets, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Hebrews through Revelation, they all write about the second coming of Jesus Christ at the end of the tribulation. At the rapture, the dead in Christ are resurrected and taken to heaven. At the second coming, the Old Testament saints are resurrected and enter the millennial kingdom. The rapture is a mystery, unprophesied event, whereas the second coming is prophesied throughout much of the Bible. The rapture ends the dispensation of grace and the preaching of the gospel of grace. The second coming begins the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. So what are we looking for? We certainly are not looking for the Antichrist or all these signs and wonders of the tribulation. We are looking for what Paul writes in Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Well, thank you for joining me during this presentation, and if you've liked this material, please consider subscribing. And for more information and resources, you can check out my website, breadoflife.media. With regards to the pamphlets and brochures, please allow some extra time for delivery, as I am not able to get to the post office. My wife has to do that, along with her many other duties, chores, and responsibilities. So give us a couple of weeks there for delivery. Thank you. I appreciate that. I want to give a special thanks to all my subscribers and viewers, and especially those that contribute to this ministry. Without your assistance and support, um, it would not be possible. So a hearty thanks to you, and may God richly bless you in all your endeavors. So until next time, either see you then or see you in the air. God bless.